Ryan and I are working on an awesome project this weekend that I can't even wait to share with you guys. So we are building movable wood storage racks and this is just gonna be an absolute game changer on our homestead. And as much as we love heating with wood, the one thing that we've come to realize is there's a lot of inefficiencies with just dealing with the firewoods. You're just constantly lugging it around. You're chopping the trees, cutting it into your lengths, carrying those over to your pile, letting them dry, carrying them back over to the splitting area, splitting them, carrying them back to your wood storage area, and then carrying them back to where you're gonna eventually burn that wood. And we got to thinking there's gotta be a better way. And so Ryan designed these awesome movable wood storage racks. And we're gonna go through the full detail on how we built them, how you can build them, and just some other tips along the way on how we plan to use this. So I'm gonna grab Ryan, who's the brains of this operation, to run through the details, kind of his thoughts behind how this is all gonna work, and then we'll get to building one. The bottom of this has a bevel cut into it, and then this main cross board underneath here is also at an angle, and then the chain pulls up. So as you're pulling it down the trail, you'll be lifting the front end, and then if it catches any rocks or anything, it's just gonna step on over, and it's just gonna be like a skid frame. Once we get it filled, I did put logs in here up to this point and move it around a little bit. It was very stable. But, you know, once it gets more full, it's gonna get a little top heavy and the boards may want to fall off or the logs. So this cross piece here is set up so I can set a, or take a strap over the top, crank it down. It's gonna hold the logs down, but it's also gonna tension the bottom member, which is gonna transfer load to the top member and into the forks. So it's actually an integral part of keeping it strong for moving. I don't know, depending on how wet your wood is, it could be pretty darn heavy. So this frame is built very strong. The fork stake boxes over here are boxed in on all sides. There's a whole bunch of structure underneath that we'll get into as we build it. And then there's the cross brace in here just to keep it a little more stable. This top tension member takes the load from the logs pushing out, transfer it to the other side. And then I did use green treated wood for this whole thing, thinking it's gonna sit outside quite a bit. You could store it outside with a piece of tar paper over it to keep the water off the logs and that would be a good way to pre-dry the wood. Or if you have a nice wood shed that you can drive these into and park it, you could make this out of just normal wood. And it would be half the price, but it wouldn't really survive outside more than a few years probably. I think with that we're going to go start cutting up boards to kit up and make a second one of these so you guys can see how we did it. So now we're over at our little dry cabin. I don't even think I've shown this little cabin to you guys yet. So surprise, we have a little cabin. It's not very big. It's just a one room, like 300 square feet. There's no running water or anything, but it's worked out to be a great little overflow spot for us and largely a woodworking shop. So this is where we're gonna cut our lumber. So here we are inside, just largely a lot of raw storage. I have my grow lights over there, which I'll be pulling out before long. My little workbench area, which is nice. Then here is where we're all set up to start chopping. I like to kit up all the parts first. I have a cut list over there. We're gonna cut up all the boards we need. We have three different lengths. We got some different shapes. We're gonna cut them all up, have them ready to go. That way when we get building, we just start putting stuff together and there's no, oh, hey, go cut this for me real quick. I drew this up in CAD first, so I know all the lengths that I need. Could have drawn it on a piece of paper, but this is the way we work. So I'm going to pre-start marking these boards. Katie will probably cut them and we'll just, I guess, production line it that way.
So we have all of our boards cut. We have the side-by-side -side loaded back up. We'll go back to our main cabin and start throwing everything together. Okay, so we're starting to lay out the base layout here. The fork pockets are going to go here, so we have some bracing for them. There's going to be a board that sits right here and flush that will stick in once we got this tightened up, but it'll sit right here so that when the fork comes in, it doesn't have anything to grab on. And these end pieces are actually, I just have them sitting there for spacers, but they're going to sit like this. So when you're dragging this along and if you catch a rock or something like that, it won't rip it out. It'll just bounce over it. Start putting screws in. So we have the lower base together. So what we're gonna do now is build an almost identical piece to this just next to it. That's gonna be the upper level. We'll lay in our cross pieces that go like here that create the rest of the fork pocket. Go like here and here. And this is a six inch fork pocket, so it's inch and a half tall, six inches wide. We have four inch forks. You may make this a little bigger if you have six inch forks. Yeah. We're gonna put two screws like one here and here on each one down into this fork. uprights on. The next step is going to be to secure the top piece to the bottom piece. We haven't done that yet because we're letting these boards, the verticals, align the two together. The way we're going to do this is with these 8 inch power lags. They're going to go through the top board, through the cross piece, and all the way into the bottom piece. We're going to pre-drill all the way down to this yellow mark so that we know we've got it drilled all the way down there and then we're going to come back and run these down through it. We're going to do it at every place there's a cross board all the way around.
coming together really nicely. So the last step we have is to attach this chain that will allow us to drag the structure if we need to. We're gonna run a piece of all thread. This is half inch coarse thread, all thread, all the way through here. I'm gonna cut a piece of pipe. This is half inch black iron pipe to go in the middle. And then these are just brackets designed for joining some Unistrut together. They were just at the hardware store. And I'm gonna cut some little flanges out, or little, I guess, pieces of strap out of here. We're gonna drill that out to half inch so we can go here. We're gonna bend it over so it sticks out about here and then put the chain, these uh, chain end links through it and then hook a little piece of chain between it. So that's how the assembly is gonna work. You can do this however you want. I have a welder and some nice metal working tools so I'm gonna make this a little bit nicer but this could really, in fact you don't even, well you don't really have to do the pipe my initial plan was just to put a nut on each side, but my concern was when I put my strap here to go over and hold down the logs, the all thread threads are known, they're kind of weak. If you start pulling on here too hard, they'd bend. This pipe is going to transfer the load out to the shear points and it's going to make it much, much stronger. So. See if this washer fits. It's awful tight. Oh, I think it's gonna go though. Looks good. So what we gotta do is figure out how many chain links we need. I think was maybe four. I don't know if this is advised, but it does work. That's <laughs> all that matters. Slightly dangerous. So these can be a hair tricky. Chain through both. And your pinch it. Aha. There it goes. There you go. Hey, hey. So we will just tighten this up now. There it goes. So now. It's pretty sweet. These don't really want to move. You can hook onto it. Nice and strong. Yep, and then this is a point where you can put your ratchet strap onto to hold down the wood and it's gonna be nice and strong. So while Ryan's working on the other side, I thought I would show you guys that our new flooring is in for inside the cabin so that we can finally get rid of that green carpet in the kitchen. So we'll get started on this soon. So stay tuned for that. That'll be super fun. have two wood racks made now so we're gonna put it to the test by chopping down a few more trees loading it up and see how it handles and yeah want to fill it all the way up and drive around and make sure it doesn't fall apart 
we'll <laughs> and see. then we'll be happy with it. We'll see how it does. <laughs> So as far as the trees that we're taking out today, we're working to thin out some of the areas of the woods, but we're also clearing out a strip over here by our solar wall. We have a couple of videos on that already, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. But basically some trees are casting some shadows and for solar to work, you need sunshine. So we're working to open that up and so far so good. So should we get started? I'm ready to get to work. <laughs> Let's do it. Don't do that. Oh no. Yeah, all the cords are there. This whole section all cleaned up so now the nice thing about these movable wood racks is Ryan's just gonna pick it up and move it over there so we can keep stacking more logs. the way we've decided to organize these logs since we have two of these built so far is these are all the ones that are small enough that they don't need split so these can just get tucked away until they're dry and we'll pull it out to burn in our wood boiler this winter so or this next winter and then over here is the bigger one so these are going to need to be split probably this fall so we figured it'd be easier to keep them separate so there's no sorting or anything so we'll put these off to the side split it in a bit and then load them back up and they'll be ready to burn woohoo so we have it all loaded up and Ryan's gonna explain the next step to get it secure to move yeah so the final step here and this is the plan is to use a ratchet strap it goes over all the wood it connects to that black iron pipe that we put in so this is distributing the load out to the shear point so you're not bending up that all thread goes over the other side and this does two things 
This is securing all the wood. It's not going anywhere now when we move it. Yep. But it's also pre-tensioning this bottom member. It's pulling up on the outside edges and tensioning it up and actually, I don't know, the ground's not completely flat. But that's transferring some of the load to the bottom board so that it's helping carry the load. So with the way these fork uh, holes are made, you know, the this thing shouldn't be able to fall off, shouldn't be able to slide sideways very much, shouldn't be able to go forward or backwards with the wood strapped down. We should be able to just carry it on down and put a piece of tar paper over it to keep the rain off of it and let it sit till we're ready to burn. Cool, let's test it out. Yeah, let's try it. What do you think? It rode okay? It did great, yeah. It hit some pretty good bumps, it wobbled around, but nothing fell off. Awesome. We'll get some tar paper. All good. Well, we have our second wood wreck finished. It passed the test. I'm happy with it. I'm super happy with it, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and you know, this was kind of lighter pine, mm -hmm. but I do think when we get some wet oak on there, I think it's still gonna be fine. The machine didn't really struggle with it. It didn't seem like it was stressed. I think it's got a lot of capacity left. So far so good. And I think we'll probably build a few more, don't you think? Yeah, uh, so this is half a cord. I don't know if Katie mentioned that earlier. Mm -mm. With 24 inch logs, it's exactly half a cord. So I do think we want to probably have room for five cords. So we'll probably end up building another eight of them. Awesome. Sounds fun. Well, we'll be busy for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here. We so appreciate you guys. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you on the next one.